Hello students and welcome to this part of chapter one. So in chapter one, we have discussed what management is all about, who are managers, what are their responsibilities, what are organizations, what are challenges, etc. But in this part of the chapter, in this appendix, let's call it, here we will look into the history and the development of management. How did management become the way it is today? What were the earlier theories, the, earlier, the earlier schools of thought on management? So this is the focus of our discussion throughout this video. So we begin with the ancient management approach. These are the management styles that were followed in Egypt and in China when they were building these big structures like the pyramids, Ahramat, Fimasr, and the Great Wall of China. So basically they were enslaving people and they were just you know running things by blood and violence in order to get things done so that was an ancient management early management approach one of the first uh, thoughts on management was proposed by adam smith and he proposed the idea or the concept of what is called job specialization or the division of labor so from the name itself, we divide work. So we break down a job into smaller and repetitive tasks. So it's a big task. For example, someone who works on, um, uh, you know, on recruiting someone. So people who work in the human resources department, for example, what do they do? So let's write down their activities. So we break down this big job into smaller tasks, into narrower and more repetitive tasks. And by doing that, we would be able to, you know, increase productivity because we, uh, as proposed by Adam Smith, we are increasing workers skill at a particular task. And then we are trying to create savings when it comes to, you know, time and, you know, the equipment that are being used, etc. So the division of labor or job specialization, this is when we get a big task and then we break it down into smaller, more narrow, uh, uh, more narrow activities. And by doing this, we are trying to make workers more skilled and we are trying to make them more productive. A major part, a major historical milestone in the field of management and in the concept of management was what is known as the Industrial Revolution. So this is when, uh, this is a period in, in history uh, in the late 18th century when, you know, machine power was substituted for human power making it more economical to manufacture goods in factories than at home. What that means is that now we have factories at that time in the late 18th, uh, 18th century. Now we have, uh, you know, machinery. Now we can produce more instead of just having, you know, uh, artisan work. Now we have machines that can produce a lot more goods. We have a lot uh, you know, a lot more production that is going on nowadays. And because of this big boom, in production and in the revolution in uh, the industry of course this proposed a lot of different challenges on how to manage these people you know before it was only a couple of people working at a workshop uh, and it was just you know they are they, they it, it was all about the daily business but now we have big companies and now these big companies employ a lot of people hundreds and thousands of uh, of people of assembly line workers of laborers etc so now this has proposed a new era in the field of management because now we have to manage a lot more people and now we have to uh, now we have competitors and now we have to ensure that we employ strategies to keep our employees happy to make them more productive to train them to motivate them to keep customers happy etc so the industrial revolution did indeed revolutionize uh, the idea and the concept of management so this is an exhibit or a graph that basically summarizes this entire uh, uh, this entire part of the chapter. So we have the historical background and then you have all these other approaches. Now we move on to the classical approach. So the classical approach to management. So this is one style of management. It started with 
uh, you know, uh, emphasizing the rationality and making organizations and workers as efficient as possible. So basically, this classical approach is all about the organization itself. We don't care about you, the employee. We want you to do the job right. And that's it. So we don't care about your personal feelings. We don't care about your personal circumstances. Your family, we don't care about all of this. We care about you doing the job right so that the organization can make so, some more money. So that is the classical approach. Then came the scientific management approach invented by an engineer called Frederick Taylor. So basically what Frederick Taylor did was introduce science in the field of management. So his main idea was that there is one best way where things can be done, where a certain job can be done. So what he did was introducing science in a plant, in a factory, if you must not. So what he did was like measuring, for example, how long did it take for job A to be done? Then how long did it take for job B to be done? And so on. So he was trying to measure exactly how much it took to you know, perform a certain job. Then try to minimize, reduce the time that was needed for each and every job. And at the end, they would, he would like reduce the time needed to complete one product. And by doing so, he improved and increased productivity. And by increasing productivity, now the company is making more money. So this is how science was introduced in the field of management. So Frederick Taylor said, there is one best way where we can do things. So these are the principles that Frederick Taylor followed. These are the principles that Frederick Taylor came up with in his movement, in his approach, which is referred to here as uh, scientific management. Some of Frederick Taylor's most prominent followers were Frank and his wife Lillian. So they were psychologists and they tried to study hand and body motions of workers, of laborers who worked at plants and factories. Uh, following Frederick Taylor's ideas, uh, they wanted to eliminate inefficient hand and body motions so that workers become more productive. So to label these basic hand motions, they uh, named them thurbligs. So it's a classification scheme to label, to name basic hand motions. So in the plant, inside the factory, they wanted laborers and workers to you know, to act and to use certain hand and body motions in a way that is more productive. So to avoid wasting time by, you know, performing physical uh, uh, labor. So this was one of the earlier ideas in the field of efficiency and effectiveness. Now another, uh, another option or another school of thought on management is the general administrative theory. It is an approach to management which basically focuses on describing what managers do and what makes up good management practice. So this is basically like different uh, you know, thoughts of different scholars and scientists. They said that a good manager should be able to do one, two, three, four. And a bad manager is someone who has these characteristics. So the general administrative theory is basically a description of what managers should do and what makes a good manager and what managers should avoid. So it's simply a description. It didn't follow principles. It didn't follow any particular science. It didn't follow any particular approach. It's basically thoughts of different people that were put together. Another major contributor to the field of management was Henry Fayol. So he was the one who came up with principles of management. He was the first to introduce general administrative theory. There were no principles. There were just, you know, thoughts and ideas of different people. This is a good manager. Like in Henry Fayol, was the one who came up with al mabadi with the principles. He was the one who came up, who, 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 he was the one who first said that management is not something that is done arbitrarily. 
there are principles, there are rules, there are things that need to be followed. وبسبب مساهمة الجليلة هذه في هذا العلم, now management was something that we could actually teach. So he came up with these rules that management could be applied in all organizational situations and even taught in universities, schools, and different courses. So the concept of Henry Fayol was that management is based on principles and these set of principles can be uh, therefore taught to others. So in these couple of slides we have a breakdown of all those 14 principles of Fayol's. So things like division of labor, authority, discipline, etc. This is how Henry Fayol proposed uh, his ideas and thoughts about management. So in the you know in the words of Henry Fayol if you wanted to manage others these are the principles that you needed to follow so uh, in this slide we have seven and in this slide we have the next seven so things like centralization uh, order equity etc so these are all principles proposed by Fayol now we are now in the year 2020, so not necessarily that all of those principles uh, can be, you know, uh, applicable the same way they were proposed at that time to current situations. Nevertheless, uh, you know, still uh, the 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 uh, you know the concept uh, uh, and you know the uh, the spirit of those principles are definitely helpful in today's world. So it's all about finding out how can, uh, you know, these principles be applied to the current work environments. Another contributor over here was this gentleman who came up with the concept of bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. It's a kind of a difficult word to pronounce and to spell, so please pay attention to that. And please make sure that you have a clear understanding of what bureaucracy is. And also, please make sure that you have a clear understanding and differentiation between bureaucracy and democracy. al bureaucratia bureaucracy over here is something that is very different from democracy or a democratia A democratia or democracy is about the opinion of the majority. رأي الأغلبية. تصويت. إذا الأغلبية موافقين على المشروع الفلاني, then we would go with it. That is democracy. This is not what we are talking about over here in this slide. This slide talks about bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy focuses on authority. Bureaucracy focuses on the hierarchy of the organization. It's all about the rules, the regulations, making sure that you have the approval of the bosses. We gave the example that, you know, in order for someone to be hired in an organization, uh, not only, you know, the people in HR has to give the approval, so the general manager has to give the approval, and then the uh, direct supervisor has to give the approval and then the CEO of the company has to give the approval then all of this will be sent to the headquarter uh, of the headquarters of the company in Riyadh for example and then they have to start their own process as well Ijra'at kathira jiddan wa muwafaqat kathira jiddan this is what bureaucracy is about you have to also Keep in mind that we now are not critiquing bureaucracy. bureaucracy This is only one thought. This is only one way of doing management. Because actually bureaucracy can work well in some organizations. So bureaucracy over here is one management style which focuses on rules, regulations, and authority okay and it's all about impersonal relationships impersonal means we don't care about you I don't care if your mother died yesterday you should come to work today so that's bureaucracy for you okay and this exhibit basically summarizes the concept of bureaucracy
Then another approach, another style, another you know thought about management is something called organizational behavior. And as I mentioned, there's a separate, dedicated entire course in your degree plan called organizational behavior in which you will discuss in detail what this field is all about. But when we say organizational behavior, we study the behaviors of people at work. So what makes them more productive? How can we motivate them? How can we make them more loyal? Okay, how do we take care of them so that they take care of us? This is organizational behavior. Axel bureaucracy, really just, uh, which we just mentioned that it, it is characterized with impersonal relationships. We don't care about you. Axel organizational behavior. In organizational behavior, no, we, do, we recognize that you are a human being and you have certain needs that need to be addressed. So again, here's a summary of this movement, uh, uh, organizational behavior. You don't need to know really so much about it because as we mentioned, there's an entire course that you will study in the future, but you know, some extra information wouldn't hurt. And then another major milestone in the field of management was the Hawthorne studies, was the Hawthorne studies. So in this Hawthorne studies, uh, we mentioned the story in our lecture. So in here, a group of scientists, they went to a power plant, and they, were, they, they wanted to see if we manipulate and we make changes in the physical work environment, what is going to happen to the productivity of workers. So what they did was that they played a little with the level of light. So they dimmed the light and then they switched on the lights. And they wanted to measure, now, are people going to be more productive and work better, or are they going to be less productive? So what happened is that they found out that productivity decreased no matter what. So what was happening? Then they realized that it wasn't the level of lighting that affected the productivity of employees, it was the fact that they were watching these employees. Why? Because now you realize that someone is watching you, someone is judging you. So this is the whole concept of these Hawthorne studies okay is that uh, and it, it 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 introduced a new level of ideas uh, in the field of management and this is why nowadays whenever there's an experiment whenever there's a study they try to make it anonymous so that the true your true self is actually showing here. The quantitative approach. There's always this uh, uh, discussion between people who say quantity versus quality. Quantity is all about is all about what is all about the numbers, Kamiya. and quality is about you know how well you do things, al -jawda. So the quantitative approach in management is the use of quantitative techniques, the use of numbers in order to improve decision making. Now we don't make decisions without numbers. We don't make decisions without proper statistics. No one can make a good decision. لازم أعرف أنا كم موظف عندي هذول الموظفين كم أعمارهم هذول الموظفين كم واحد راح يتقاعد منهم كم الوظائف اللي ممكن نتخلص منها خلال السنة القادمة هذول كم رواتبهم and so on you need a lot of numbers in order for you to make a good decision as a manager so that is the quantitative approach to management for you it's all about numbers it's all about statistics then another another idea in management was total quality management. Most of you are going to study a separate course called total quality management, but here we just focus on the main idea of this concept. The main idea of total quality management is continuous improvement and focus on customers.
this is what total quality management is all about it's all about continuous improvement we make sure that we are always 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 making things better it doesn't mean that we stop no we can make it even better and then we focus everything all of our efforts are centered around our customers because these are the people who give us money and without customers we have no company so we put customers first that is total quality management so here's a nice exhibit or summary about you know quality management uh, some of you are going to move on later to study an entire course on total quality management on other quality courses but you know the topic of quality is going to you know is going to be uh, repeated in uh, several other uh, courses as well so you might as well you know um, get some idea of what quality management is all about it's it has an intense focus on the customer so the customer is always at the center of all decisions uh, made uh, when it, with quality management in mind it has a you know a great concern for continual improvement it, you know, coming from Japanese uh, you know ideas of business it's all about continuous improvement it's all about what can we do better the next time just because we did well now it doesn't mean that we can do even better so this is one of the you know central ideas of quality management uh, uh, process focused quality management focuses on the process so how things are done it's not only about the result how we arrive at that result is as equally important improvement in the quality of everything the organization does so it's not only about improving human resources it's not only about improving customer service it's about improving everything because the idea of quality management is that everything is connected you know the finance department supports the HR department and the HR department support supports the customer service department and therefore you know this is how we deliver a great service to our customers so it should include and be comprehensive of all aspects in the organization it's all about accurate measurement so without having accurate measures and performance indicators and ways of evaluating how successful how efficient how effective you are in your processes you will not be able to judge whether or not you are you know delivering great quality so quality management uh, has a high emphasis on accuracy of measurements and finally empowerment of employees it's all about giving power to employees to make little decisions at least ones that you know uh, uh, that influence their daily activities their daily work activities it's all about you know giving employees the trust to uh, you know the trust to uh, uh, to share some of the responsibility the trust to uh, you know make some of those decisions and the trust to uh, you know uh, help you uh, uh, you deliver better service so there are a number of different characteristics of quality management you can read about them in more detail and then finally the contemporary approach to management now contemporary approach the contemporary approach to management has two main uh, aspects uh, it recognizes that organizations are open systems so what is a system? تسمع الكلمة هذه كثيرا. System. What is a system? ما نتكلم على Microsoft Office ولا ما نتكلم على Microsoft Windows. We're talking about systems in general. What is a system? It's a, a set, a group of related and interdependent parts arranged in a way that produces a unified whole. So عناصر معينة. تعتمد على بعضها البعض ومترابطة مع بعضها البعض هذه العناصر تنتج لنا وحدة كاملة So without these relationships between these different elements we will never have a product Okay? And then there's a distinction always between closed and open systems A closed system is a system that doesn't interact with the environment ما يتأثر ما يتأثر بأي حاجة. Whatever happens in the business environment, 
it doesn't affect this organization it doesn't affect the system like in an open system is always always affected by what happens in the environment and this is what organizations are about اي شيء يحصل في بيئة الأعمال طبعا راح يأثر على الشركة تغير قانون راح تتأثر الشركة تأثر الاقتصاد راح تتغير الشركة تأثرت البيئة السياسية راح تتأثر الشركة So of course the contemporary approach says and recognizes that organizations are open systems and we must understand that everything can affect that open system so here is a summary of what we just explained okay system has inputs and outputs and the environment affects the level of input and output and lastly the uh, most common approach uh, that has been discussed in the field of management is the contingency approach so this basically says that we do not have one best approach so we have so far, we have discussed a lot of different ideas, a lot of different approaches to management. What this approach is saying is that we don't have, we cannot say that, you know, the best approach is the classical idea of management or the best approach was the one was bureaucracy, for example. The contingency approach is, says that, you know, it's all, of, you know, different approaches are appropriate for different types of situations. So we don't have one way of managing, one best way of managing. We need to adapt our style. We need to adapt our approaches. We need to adapt our, you know, ideas of management depending on the situation. What, you know, what Apple, the famous company, Apple or Amazon did and made them successful in terms of management, it's not necessarily going to be applicable in my company here in the kingdom. So not necessarily because company X was successful when it comes to implementing a certain management approach it doesn't mean that this also going to be successful with me in my own organization so we have to ad adopt what is called a contingency approach so based on different contingencies based on different situations we need to you know employ different managerial strategies approaches and ideas so we said you know we need to adapt to the different changes we need to you know make sure that based on different situations we employ the right strategies so wh where is this coming from we mentioned that you know the business environment is constantly changing and we have a lot of variables a lot of you know constantly changing aspects what are some of those variables you know some of the things that are always changing a big thing is of course the size of the organization you know the way you manage two people in a store is definitely going to be different from the way you manage 10,000 people in a big petrochemical company. Uh, so the size of the organization, uh, you know, imposes uh, uh, different, uh, uh, different managerial styles that need to be adopted. So you have to be careful when it comes to what type of style, what type of approach what type of management ideas do you follow when it comes to managing a group of employees? What can be very successful with managing 50 people is not necessarily going to work with 50,000 people. The routineness of task technology. So routine technologies require organizational structures, leadership styles, and control systems that differ from those required by customized or non-routine technologies. What that means is that, you know, we have certain technologies and certain work processes that are considered routine, that are considered repetitive. So you just do, the, you have a set of, uh, you know, a, a, a set of technologies, a set of work, uh, 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 you know, items that need to be, you know, just basically followed and implemented in that same order. So routine, repetitive, they repeat themselves every day. So do you need to ensure that you know because of these variables because of you know the distinction of routine and non-routine tasks the you know the approach of management that you implement is definitely is definitely going to be revised is definitely something that needs to be carefully thought about so making sure that you know you examine whether those tasks and technologies that you are implementing are routine or not then 
uh, are they you know repetitive or uh, or are they customized you know they have been built for you know a, a specific purpose with specific demands then definitely the way these things are managed uh, is, is going to be different and then we have environmental uncertainty so we will discuss uncertainty later in other chapters in greater detail but we said that managers deal with uncertainties all the time it's all about making sure that the decision that you made for that you make for the future can actually help your organization be successful in that you know foreseeable or unforeseen future so when things are always changing rapidly so and you cannot always be 100% accurate when it comes to coming up with estimations and guesses so this is a variable that you need to uh, you know keep in mind and based on the changes and the uncertainties being you know imposed by the environment you need to definitely change your management style and this is why the contingency approach is very popular and finally we have individual differences people are different what motivates Khalid is different from what motivates Muhammad what makes you know my customers happy is different from what makes your customers happy so people are different in terms of their growth needs in terms of their tolerance for ambiguity in terms of their preferences etc and because of the nature of people uh, because the nature of people is you know changing and is different we need to be you know able to be flexible enough to change our management style and approaches to uh, be you know to make sure that we are accommodating all of those different uh, types of you know people and all of those individual differences Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.